Do you remember Fly B? Well, they're back. And today I'm going to be taking a flight in uh, Dash 8 over to Belfast City from Birmingham International. Now, who remembers Stobart Air? Well, they're not back. Uh, however, there is a kind of a replacement. Uh, it's basically Aer Lingus Regional uh, called Emerald Airlines. And I'm going to be flying back from Belfast City with them in their ATR 72 uh, into Manchester this time. Um, so the purpose of today's video is to compare and contrast and see what they're both like and see which one um, I'd prefer flying with in the future and maybe you can have a look and um, make your own mind up too and let me know in the comments below. Uh, right, so I arrived at Birmingham Airport nice and early on what was a lovely day for flying and as per usual security was a breeze and I was able to take it easy for a bit at one of my favourite spots in Terminal 2 uh, by Gate 14 overlooking the ramp. Now there's some great views from here, although there wasn't much activity going on either outside or inside the building. Anyway, time ticked on towards our scheduled departure time of 15.15. But by 14.30 there was no sign of our aircraft. Now a quick check on Flight Radar 24 told me that things were about to become a whole lot more stressful. Okay, so it's 10 past 3 and um, we were supposed to be departing in five minutes uh, but unfortunately there has been a delay and uh, the, the flight um, hasn't even left Belfast yet and Flybe sent an email around about two o'clock saying it's going to be delayed until 1620 and uh, there's nobody here from Flybe uh, to communicate anything and uh, nobody knows the reason uh, but it looks like I'm um, looking on flight radar 24 it's been delayed all, all day pretty much from the other domestic flights it's been taking so I'm um, gonna make a decision uh, depending on boarding times as to whether I go or not because it's gonna be tight to get my connection back to Manchester with Emerald Airlines a little bit later on in the day we'll see how it goes and I'll give you an update in a bit well about half past three some staff turned up although there was no effective communication between them and the waiting passengers. But looking around, I got the impression that this was anything but a rare occurrence and there was a general air of acceptance with it all, which I guess is fine, provided you don't have a connection to make at the other end. But of course I did, and that was at six o'clock. Uh, so by half past four, I was in the position whereby if we weren't called to board soon, I'd have to call the whole thing off. Well, boarding was eventually announced at 16.45, so I figured that if they could get everybody on quickly and then get the aircraft up in the air, I might just stand a chance of making my next flight. Now, boarding at gate 16 is just down the stairs, past the jet bridge, by the way, that looks like it's collapsed on the floor. But either that or it's just given up all hope that the plane was going to turn up. Anyway, I did allow myself a few seconds to admire the aircraft, uh, which was JECX, a 15-year-old Dash 8400. So, first category for this video, punctuality and boarding. Uh, well, gate staff weren't overly friendly. I did get a welcome upon boarding, but we were very, very late, and that was the main stress point, really. One star only, I'm afraid. According to the apology from the flight deck, the cause of the delay was the late departure of the aircraft from Leeds Bradford Airport earlier on in the day uh, due to an issue in the terminal. A uh, bit vague really, <laughs> but that was the only information we were going to get, so uh, make of that what you will. And on to our next category of this review, which is the seat and cabin. And laid out in a 2-2 configuration, the interior of the Dash 8 did look fresh and clean. The seat itself was comfortable enough, anti-macassars were provided on all headrests. Now, there's a basic drop-down table here above a pouch that contains the usual safety card information. 
Our legroom is okay uh, with a seat pitch of 30 inches and the side of the seat was clean and tidy. There are individual air vents and reading lights above your head and an attendant call button if needed. Yeah, I did like the interior actually, very smart, four stars here. Well, in terms of the in-flight experience, uh, you know, cabin temperature was about right throughout the flight, uh, which was good, uh, no issues there. Uh, there were two cabin managers in attendance and we were served free tea, coffee, juice and biscuits, uh, which was a uh, welcome sight. Now, I used the toilet that was located at the front of the aircraft, which uh, was rather small, but reasonably clean. And I was disappointed to find that the water wouldn't work and there was some sanitizer provided, but you know what, this is becoming a, a really common theme now on my recent travels anyway. Um, have you had any issues like this lately? Any, anyway, I was uh, seated in row 17 towards the rear, um, but there were empty seats to near to the front of the aircraft. As we approached the coast of Northern Ireland, I asked one of the cabin crew if I could sit in one of these so that I could exit the aircraft quicker and improve my chances of making the connection. Now she did say that the aircraft was a little nose heavy and they'd already moved four people to the rear. So to be honest, I thought my chances were a bit slim, but nevertheless, uh, she asked for my seat number and said she'd go and speak to the captain. Guess what, I never heard from her again. <laughs> so, you know, I wouldn't have minded if she'd have just said no, uh, but this felt more like I'd just been fobbed off. Overall then, yeah, just two stars for Flybe here I'm afraid. So we came in to land at Belfast City Airport and flying straight in, which did improve my chances somewhat. And by 1752 we were at the gate. Now, there was absolutely no control over passengers at this point, but yeah, fortunately this time it uh, did work to my advantage as I was able to move forward several rows uh, before people stood up in the aisle. Now, there was a thank you from the crew as I left. Yeah, in terms of the disembarkation process and organisation, uh, three stars here. Oh my god, well I just got through security which was super quick actually. And the departure board says wait in lounge, which is a great sign, isn't it? Not normally, uh, but it is today. So, um, yes, I think I'm going to make it all good. Um, yeah, landed at 17.52 and uh, the gate closed at 18.10, apparently, according to um, Emerald Airlines. But um, when I got through security, which fortunately was really quick. It, uh, it was saying waiting lounge, which is which is great news, and so at least I've got um, five ten minutes just to chill out. <laughs> it's just turned into a, a much more stressful trip than I thought it was going to be, so I'm going to have to skip the Guinness, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I'll be back tonight, all being well. Let's see what the second leg's like, shall we? And the second leg was going to be in this Emerald Airlines six-year-old ATR-72 EIGPP. The thing is, I reckon I could have stayed airside, if only I'd have known which gate it was going to go from. Um, but there was nobody to ask, and I didn't really have the time to go wandering up and down looking for the right gate for my departing flight. And what would you have done in this situation? Please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, boarding was efficient and well organised, uh, with front 10 rows boarding first from the rear, as you would expect on this type of aircraft. The gate staff were about as nonplussed as the Fly B ones, uh, but it was punctual and there was a friendly welcome from the cabin crew. Four stars here. Uh, we pushed back at 18.15, right on time, um, after some great work by the crew getting everybody seated quickly. Your life jacket is under your seat. A quick review of the seat again and yeah, drop down table that slides forward and back. A reasonable legroom, uh, the seat pitch on this aircraft there uh, being 31 inches, an extra inch over Flybees Dash 8. Another pouch here for storing stuff and yeah, although there's an annoying bar here, the floor was very clean, as was the side of the seat. Uh, note also that these seats have a recline button, uh, though they weren't fitted with anti macassars on the headrests. Uh, individual reading lights, air vents and an attendant call button, similar to the Dash 8. Uh, so yeah, four stars here for Emerald Airlines seat and cabin interior. As we taxied out to runway 22, the announcement from the flight deck informed us that it would take approximately 40 minutes over to Manchester. 
Uh, we took off on time at 18.35, uh, which very rarely happens these days, does it? Actually, I was most impressed by the efficiency of Emerald Airlines. I settled into my seat and enjoyed some great views as we climbed out over Belfast city centre and some of its famous landmarks. Again there were two cabin crew members on this flight and we were served tea, coffee, a juice and no biscuits though this time. Um, I had another coffee um, which looked like it had had an argument with the top of the cup uh, but I was grateful for the refreshment uh, which was again free. Now, I must admit I was feeling a lot more relaxed on this flight for obvious reasons and I was able to look at the views this time instead of my watch as we sped across the Irish Sea. I used the toilet at the rear of the aircraft, which was again small, uh, but still a little bit more spacious than the Dash 8 in my opinion. It was clean and the water worked too, uh, so absolutely no issues here. And all in all, the in-flight experience with Demold Airlines was good and earned itself 4 stars. Uh, so let's have a look at prices. Uh, I booked both tickets at the same time for comparison purposes and was able to use a promo code with Flybe which gave me £10 off and that gave a total cost of £19.99 and I paid £37.70 for my flight back with Emerald Airlines so yeah, I think ultimately both fares are reasonable value for money now, Flybe earn an extra point here over Emerald Airlines though for running the promo code in the first place at 5 and 4 stars respectively Oh, by the way guys, have I told you about my Kofi page? And there's loads of exclusive stuff over there like photos and videos from my travels, and plus regular schedule updates and personal engagement with my supporters. Uh, you'll also get your name in lights at the end of every video for what is, I reckon, the cheapest membership rates on YouTube. Now, I tell you what, give the QR code a scan here if you're interested. It would be really great to have you on board. We arrived into Manchester 20 minutes ahead of schedule and taxied to the gate. Now, similar to Fly B, it was a bit of a free-for-all with passengers getting up and jostling for position and it was the usual terrible experience at Manchester Airport as we waited for a bus to turn up and take us to arrivals. And that's not the airline's fault though and at least we didn't have the double whammy of relying on Manchester's ground crews to bring the steps up to the aircraft. We just used our own. Anyway, it wasn't too bad in the end, as the drive around the airport to domestic arrivals does at least bring you a bit nearer to the train station. You can't complain about arriving and disembarking early, can you? Five stars here. Uh, so to sum up, um, as you can see, on this occasion, Emerald Airlines are the absolute clear winners uh, with a total of 21 stars out of a possible 25, uh, compared to Flybee's 15 stars. Now, the, the significant delays experienced with Flybe may not have been entirely their fault, I'll never know to be honest, uh, but they could have been communicated a lot better. And ultimately, you know, there's enough competition on these routes to make an informed choice. Uh, next time, I'm probably going to be more likely to select an airline that, in my opinion, offers a more reliable product together with better customer service. 
Well, I gave the inactive travelators a miss today and made my way out to the airport at ground level to catch my train home. Okay guys, um, Manchester Airport and um, well, let me know what you thought about that. I think you will probably agree that Emerald Airlines absolutely knocked Flybe out of the park in most um, categories. So um, yeah, it really makes you think, um, you know, Emerald Airlines, yeah, definitely book with them again. Flybe, I'm not so sure. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? So um, I tell you, let me know uh, what you think and if you've had any recent experiences on, on either airline um, in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always and um, I'll see you on another adventure soon. Cheers for now.